Grant a car car back. <laughs> welcome. Well, oh, water. Welcome to the is academy. That, is that Jim? It's Jim, is it? Is it actually, yeah, Jim, right? That's we we obviously have a genuine games legend right now, if you don't know who he is. Man composed Goldeneye, Banjo Kazooie, Perfect Dark, Viva Finiata. He's worked on games in franchises including Mario, Donkey Kong, World of Warcraft, Minecraft, Civilization. He's won an Ivan Novella. Um, he's also a probably lovely man and has some stories to tell. So please welcome Grant. Yeah. That makes me sound a lot better than I actually am. I'm not doing that great at all. It's just like a. Uh, uh, it just sounds good. It's not really that great. Well, I disagree. Um, well, shall we talk about your? We're going to talk about Grant's career um, because you started a little bit later in games. You weren't like fresh out of university. Uh, what were you doing before games? Is that a way of just saying that I'm old? No. So I started old, and I'm even older now, right? So I've been starting games till I was 33. So any of you people out there haven't decided your careers yet, there's a chance for you. Don't worry, you can get there in the end. So I was, I was playing in rock bands. I went to university in Manchester, did a, at the Royal Northern College of Music. I did a proper classical music degree. I'm a trumpet player. Um, but I didn't really like it. I had long hair. I was a metal fan. I wanted to be in a metal band. Really. I wanted to be an Iron Maiden or Judas Priest. That was my, that was my thing. So I played around with a few metal bands. We had like, um, some little indie albums that didn't do very well. I ended up playing trumpet in like a soul band, funk band for like four or five, well maybe like six, seven years. And it was like a proper working band. We like, um, We'd do like four gigs a week, like, you know, like all over the place, Europe and kind of thing like that. That didn't do very, we did alright, but you know, it was like a, a wage kind of thing. And then I played some more metal bands. I ended up playing trumpet for a band called uh, Little Angels, who were like a, a big UK rock band in the late 80s, early 90s. And um, we did some, they had, a, they had a number one album with a, you know, back, back in those days, and uh, you know, they did pretty well. We did some big tours, supporting Van Halen and uh, Brian Adams and uh, Bon Jovi and we did these big giant six week tours, you know, with big rock bands, that was great. And that kind of fell to pieces. And um, I got to my, like, into my thirties, it was all like, I'm just back to playing in pub rock bands for like 35 quid a night, that was what I was doing, right? And then my mate, Robin Beanland, who was a keyboard player, in one of the local bands that I played for, said, I've got a job. Like, no one that I knew got a job, right? All of my mates just signed on the dole, like I did, and played in rock bands and then signed on the dole and went on tour and did that. That's what I did for ages, right? And I thought this was going to be a tramp eventually, you know, that's what, that's what I thought I'd end up being. He said, I've got a job at this company called Rare. You know, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe it. And off he went. And he'd been there about a year and a half. He said to me, you know, Grant, you've been on the dole for about 11 years, because I have been, 22 to 33 or 32-ish. He said, uh, you know, don't you think you should get a job? And I was like, well, what can I do? He said, well, why don't you try do what I'm doing, write music for video games? I said, well, I can have a go. So he recommended I buy a bit of gear. I got an Atari uh, an ST computer with one meg of RAM, and one meg of RAM then, uh, to run Cubase. And I bought a, synth I reckon, like a synthesizer uh, and a set of speakers and sat in my bedroom in my mum's house. I still living with my mother, 33, at home. And he said, I so I spent a year, like uh, 32, 1994, to, uh, I spent that year writing music I thought was like a video game appropriate, because I played a lot of games at the time. And I sent Rare uh, five cassette tapes I never got a reply, and then out the blue I got a letter saying, please come for an interview. So I drove down to Rare, I was in, I living in Nairsborough in North Yorkshire. I drove down to the Midlands on a Friday, and Dave Wise interviewed me, and a guy called Simon Farmer, who was the uh, general manager at Rare at the time, all the time I was there. Uh, and I had, to, I had to write three pieces of music to take with me. I had to write a Batman style orchestral piece, uh, a Killer Instinct style guitar piece, and a platform like Mario piece. So I wrote those frantically, Drove down to Rare, uh, did the interview on the Friday, I got letters and I got the job on the Monday, I couldn't believe it. So that was my first job at 33. I had no job till then, I was on the dole until 33. And is it true you almost left the moment you started? Yes, it is. Because, so when I first got there, uh, Dave Wise said to me, right, your first job is working on the, the original Grey Game Boy, right? I had to convert his music from Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy Kong's Quest, to work on the original Game Boy. And the way Rare did the game, but it was all in hex, right? Hex is code. So I was used to using MIDI files and you know, synthesizers and pleasant things like that. And uh, he said, oh yeah, in, in hex is basically like a black screen with numbers on it. So the first two numbers are the note, the second two numbers are the length. So you type these great huge columns of numbers like this, right? He was super great at that. Dave was brilliant on the Super NES and on the Game Boy. He was fantastic at that. So he kind of, first day turned up, this is how it worked, and just left. 
And I was like, oh my God, this is ridiculous how I, I can't do it. So I rang Robin and said, Robin, look, I've just got the job, but I'm, I'm going to have to resign. I'm sorry, I, I'm not clever enough to do it. I'm, I just don't understand it. So I'm going to resign and go home. And like, geez, day. He's like, I said, don't be so stupid. He says, get Dave back tomorrow. Get him to take you through it again. Write down each step. So like step one, press alt four. Step two, do this. So, so I, I rang Dave Tuesday morning. I said, look, Dave, can you come back? Just take me through it again. So um, he did that. I wrote it down step by step. And I managed it in the end. Um, and I actually sort of quite enjoyed it after I got the hang of it. But it was a real... I really thought I was this stupid. I, I, I didn't have the brains to do it right. So, uh, but it worked out right in the end. So did you have any experience of games before joining Rare? I played games, that was it. So... What were they? Right, so, yeah, so I played, I got the Game Boy originally, I got Snares, I remember getting the Snares with Zelda and Super Mario, um, so, and then I went through all the Snares games like Gods and Star Wars, and I like the RPGs, early Final Fantasy, um, Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past, my favourite game of all time, I think that's a, a mar marvellous game, uh, you know, so, um, yeah, I played, yeah, played all, that, all that stuff, yeah. So what work on your, in your career so far, what work are you most proud of? I get asked that quite a lot, and I've got to say, I feel like it's a hard question to answer, and I feel like the Ask Me, ask me Tomorrow will be a different thing, so I'm really proud of, you know, Banjo Kazooie, of course, because it's lasted such a long time, I can't believe people still talk about it now. Uh, I'm really proud to do GoldenEye, you know, that was, a, that was my first proper game, you know, I couldn't believe that I got to do that, I mean, I loved Bond movies, so look, that was amazing. I mean, to do... Viva Pinata and that my first full live orchestra thing, you know, and get a BAFTA nomination for that was amazing. To get to work at Mario Rabbids, for God's sake, I mean, if you'd told me in 1995 that I got I'd get to work at a Mario game, I would never have believed it. You know, that was ridiculous. And also, getting to do a track for Super Smash Brothers, you know, that was also ridiculous. Because, like, I feel like the Smash composers are, in Japan are all fantastic. And I don't know why they bother to trust me, because they're way better than I am. So. I, didn't, I couldn't believe they said, can you do a banjo track? It was crazy to get, and, and, and the reaction to like banjo going into Super Smash Bros. was just so amazing. People were in tears, I was in tears. It was like such an amazing thing. So I, I don't I can put my finger on one thing, right? It's too hard. Do you have a, a favorite piece? <clears throat> I get asked that a lot. Well, that's hard too. I think that um, I've got lots of favorite pieces you know, over the time. It's funny, like sometimes, like on Spotify, right, you can claim your artist profile, right, so you can, you can see what people are playing off your music. All the things that I think are my best stuff, no one's playing. All the things that I, that I think are all right, everyone's playing the most, right? So it's a bit weird. I feel like sometimes as a composer, the, the technical stuff you write, the orchestration, you think, oh, it's amazing, it's fantastic, but to the average person, it's just a racket, right? It's like lots of notes going, just gets in the way. Yeah, simple, something super simple, everyone loves it, right? So on my Spotify, my... My, my top tracks normally like uh, Mid Boss Mayhem from uh, My Rabbids Kingdom Battle, because it's very Banta Kazooie, right? Like, so, and also, all the original soundtracks like Banta Kazooie aren't on Spotify, rare, I haven't put them up there, which is a bit annoying. I, I don't know why they won't do it in this one. So, and they took Viva Pinata down, and so, you know, it's a bit of a, I feel like it's not strictly accurate. But, you know, I love Freeze Easy Peak, I like that a lot. I like Mad Monster Mansion, I like Mid Boss Mayhem from My Rabbids, I like. You know, I never be the pinata song you're quite proud of. Yeah, I do, I do like, yeah, that's the one that it's called um, Bedtime Story, it's called, in fact, yeah. And I remember that was for the second game, right? And we recorded it in Prague with a live orchestra. And that was the last piece he played. It's a very slow, emotional piece. And um, the, the, the guy said to me, look, they've just finished playing it. You should get up on the roster in the studio and stand, thank the orchestra to be playing so beautifully. So I kind of got up and said, you know, I just want to say, ah, just like burst into tears, like, you know, because it was so nice. And so, yeah, that was that one. I, I like that one, yeah. Okay, well, let's move. We've, only, we've got about 15 minutes, so we've got, so we've got to get to this. So, Rush. what's the difference between being, so you were an in house composer for years, and now you're freelance, you're out there. What's the difference between in house and external? Money. So, like, normally, like, if you're an in house composer, you get to get a wage every month, and you work 9 until 5, and it's just that's the way it goes, right? When you're freelancing, it's like, it can be fantastic. Oh my God, it's desperate. It's fantastic, it's desperate. So it's like that, that. And I live in California, I live in LA, right? So it's quite pricey to live there. So the wife's a teacher, so she, she, you know, she can uh, supplement the, when my income drops to nothing, you know? So um, I do like being freelance, I've got to say. I feel like I feel like I've seen more of the kids since I've been freelance, right? I can take them to school in the morning, I'm there, you know, to pick, to pick them up, you know? So I, and I like, I can stop when I work best, I know when I do my best work, you know, you know, my, my, my life is best, and, you know, so, like, um, 
I'm, I'm best writing first thing in the morning, like, you know, court, a court to nine till like one or two in the afternoon, then I get bored and then I go and get the groceries or whatever, get the kids from school and then come back and then I might work at night if I'm busy, you know, kind of thing. So, but I do like the freelance lifestyle, but you do get that kind of, oh, it's fantastic, oh my God, I got, like right now, I'm in the, I've got no work right now, I've finished my rabbits, the DLC, like a July or so, whatever it was. So I've done some indie, little indie things, I've done an indie movie, you know, but I haven't got any proper work sorted out right now. So I'm, uh, I'm hoping that Davide Soliani, Mr. Creative Director on Mario Rabbids, has got some work for me in the future. He hasn't said so yet, but I'm hoping that he has. <laughs> it would be handy. Uh, otherwise, I'll have to go work in Target or Walmart. No, 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 no. no. Um, well, when it comes to working on games on existing brands, which you've done, you know, Donkey Kong and Goldeneye and Mario, how is that versus creating something entirely new? Well, it saves you a bit of time. If you've got a theme that someone's only, that Cody Condor's written, right? I'm not going to write better than that, so it's handy to do to get that right, so it's pretty good. I kind of really mind that. I think some composers, when they get handed existing IPs, they want to put their own personality on it, uh, you know, personality on it, and I'm, I don't really care about that. Like, I kind of feel like, if I get handed to Mario, and Davide says, can you use Princess Peach's theme, or the Mario Castle theme from the, the N64 in the Mario Kingdom Battle game, like, I'm super chuffed to do that, like, you know, like, you know, when I did the, the Peach's Castle for Mario Rabbit's Kingdom Battle, to get to write that theme and use Cody Condor's theme was just amazing. I was like, oh my god, I'm actually getting to write this piece of music, you know. Uh, and it, it was just, I, I was just on cloud now. I thought it was a fantastic thing to do. And then, you know, the fact that um, I had to do some of the, the little jingles for the Mario game, for the Mario Rabbids game, uh, from with orchestra. And so some of those jingles are like super old, from the SNES days, right? And so I had to just work it up by ear. And like, Cody Condor's a bit jazzy. So I remember, um, the game over theme, that's da 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 of the little Mario game over Ditty. I just thought that was so fantastic. I thought, my God, I had to pinch myself, right? Like, even like, when I was doing the cutscenes, you know, um, my son walked past the my room and said, God, Dad, that, that's Mario on your screen that you're writing. You know, like, those things, you know, that's once in a lifetime for me, probably, right? I've done these two games now, but that's it, right? You know, I think mean, that is just, I, I'm just so flattered that they would get me to do it. And they were nice to me, too. So, I think it's fantastic. I love it. So you don't feel like constrained, you perhaps you get a, you're a bit of fanboy. Not at all. Like Duke Duke Golden I like you get to use the Bond theme, right? Like I'm old, so the Bond movies when I was a kid were the biggest best thing of the year, right? Best music, best sound effects, best just action. So to get to use the Bond to Monty Norman's Bond theme, for God's sake, you know, I couldn't believe it. Like I just I just tried to do it in every different style I could find, do it metal, do it faith no more, do it I don't know, you know, like I just loved it, it was fantastic. What do you think are the biggest challenges for being a game composer? So people here might be interested in becoming a game composer. What do you think are the biggest challenges? It's getting your first gig right. That's the hard part, right? And I, I always feel like when I talk to younger com like with other composers who are trying to get into the business, I kind of say, you know, I've got a few things that I always say. Like one, never ask you, argue with a creative director. You're wasting your time, right? Because you might think that you've written the best piece of music in the world, right? It's a great piece and they just don't get it. They want to write it again. Don't do that, just do it again. You might, you can walk away and call them on the names you want under your breath, right? But just do what you want, right? There's no point arguing you're gonna get fired because there's eight million composers stood behind you wanting your job, right? So don't do that. Also, it's no good just, if you've written the best piece of music in the world and you put it on a website somewhere or on YouTube somewhere, the chances of somebody else finding it are remote, right? Everyone does that, not gonna find it, right? It's, it's, don't do that, like, you have to be, like here, you have to be in the space where people are doing that thing that you want to do, right? If you want to be a games composer, go to game jams, go to conventions, go to stuff where you bump into people all the time. Because a lot of time when people, if they like you, they'll probably just give you the gig. Like, it's not so much about, I feel like having the, the talent to write music is, is like 50%, that's half the battle. The other battle, the half of it, is networking. People you know, the people you bump into, that's super important. So, you know, and also I think, I remember when I was working at Rare, I remember typing into the internet, I want to be a film composer, right? And a, an article popped up by a guy called Richard Kraft, who I know now, he's like a big agent in LA, right? And he was talking about Danny Elfman, who he, re who he represents. And he said, 
a lot of times with composers, um, the developers want them to be a, a jokey, happy person who can have a bit of a laugh and take the piss you know, and all that and not, not be the kind of introvert guy because they're hard to deal with. And I feel like, I think most composers, I think we are introvert people. We sit in darkened rooms for eight hours a day. We don't talk to anybody. I don't want to talk to anybody at all, right? I like to sit by myself and just do my thing, right? And I feel like you've got to learn to put on that kind of persona, even if it's not you, that when you get st stuck with somebody or you can just have a little bit of a chat, a little bit of a laugh, be amicable, you probably get the job, right? So I feel like you have to think about that. You have to become that person that you might not be you, and that will get you the gig, probably more than the music you write. Like, you know, like, I, 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 like a good, good friend of mine is Danny Baranowski, right? Danny Baranowski wrote a Super Mean Boy, Binding of Isaac, uh, Crypt of the Necro Dancer. Now, Danny was uh, this guy who worked in Home Depot and Lowe's, like a do-it-yourself place in America, for years, right? Wanted to be a video game composer, and he, he got a, he actually remixed one of my Perfect Dark tracks, got it on an OC remix, right? The guy that made Cannabalt heard it and gave Danny the job. Equally, uh, uh, C418, uh, Daniel, who does the, the early Minecraft music, right? He was just in a chat room when Notch was looking for a composer. Right at the start of Minecraft, right? So anybody here write music? I write music. Daniel was like 18, 17 years of age. Got the job, right? So there's a bit of luck to it, being in the right place at the right time. And I also, Always say yes, I don't care what it is. If they say, can you write that? Yeah, I do it all the time. I had a little period of people asking me for um, uh, marching band music in America with hip hop drum beat, right? Drum beat, right? I've never done that in my life, never done it ever. Oh, I do that every day, it's my favorite kind of music. I write it at home all the time. Just say yes to it, right? And go home and Google it, right? And if you don't, if you can't do it, at least you want to go. If you say no, you know, you've got to be in it to win it, right? So. Don't be like that. Just say yes to everything. I don't care what it is. And have a go, right? Top tip there from Grant Kirk Hope is lie. Um, Absolutely lie. <laughs> or Trump's the world, right? So lie. I, I, think, I think it might be nice to ask to get the audience to ask a few questions. We don't have a lot of time, but before I do, I'm just trying to make sure Will has caught my eye. Uh, what, um, what makes this job so rewarding um, or exciting? What do you love about being a games composer? Well, I like writing music, right? Like, I really have no talent at all, apart from writing music. I'm not even sure I'm that good at talented at that, really. But, but I mean, you know, my wife is eternally... It's not for me, because I can't put a shelf on, I can't do anything, right? I'm hopeless, right? I'm, I just can write music and that's it. So I'm, I'm a bit of a failure in life, apart from music. So, you know, for God's sake, you know, to get to... The people to even know one piece of music that I've written in my life is amazing, right? But to people to know lots of pieces of music that I like, and, and not even that they like it, that's amazing. I always say any artist of any persuasion, a writer, a photographer, whatever, if, any, if, if something came out of your head, if somebody else in the world gets it and likes it, just one person, I think that's amazing, right? And so the fact that a few people like stuff, what I do, is equally amazing. The fact that people still like Banta Kazooie and the DK rap, which is obviously shit, you know, uh, you know, and I, <laughs> I, I hope I have not said it's completely shit, but, but I mean, you know, for God's sake, I mean, I feel like if I'm just known for the Golden Eye Pause watch music and the Donkey Kong rap, that's good enough for me, right? You know, never mind anything else, so. Well, I, I think you know for quite a lot more. Does anyone want to ask Grant a question? We don't have a lot of time, but. Anybody, you, you, sir. Madam, sir, yes, madam. Both. Uh, hey Ron, um, um, if you've got something, can you tell us about how um, Van Halen influenced your um, perfect art score, particularly the ending theme, and how that sort of all came about? So, uh, obviously I'm a metal guitar player, I'm a metal fan, right, so I love Van Halen, and we were very lucky that the band I played for, we toured with Van Halen, right, so we did a six week tour with them, and Eddie Van Halen, honestly, was the nicest man in the world, I'm not exaggerating, he's super nice, I spoke to him every day for six weeks around Europe, because I just thought, I'm never going to meet him ever again, right, he was super nice, he gave me a guitar, it, amazing, right, so, I feel like there's a lot of metal in my early influence in my early stuff at Rare because I'm, I'm still a massive metal fan. So, but I guess older metal, you know, like Maiden, Priest, you know, Van Halen, Scorpions, you know. I mean, I, I, I like Nightwish these days. I feel like Nightwish is quite modern for me, really. Queen's right, massive Queen's right fan, massive Queen fan. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, so I feel like there's a lot of metal in my stuff. It's just, I don't know, it's, it's I'm just metal through and through. That's what I can say. Yes. <laughs> Come on. Uh, hi. Hello. Um, is, is there any meet and greet sessions with you and the uh, Mario Post Rabbits team? Meet and greet? Yeah. 
And there might be a chance to meet with Grant after the Banjo Kazooie session later, but the Marion Rabbids team, um, no, Davide's actually ill and he's not able to fly over here. So obviously he's actually just pulled out, but you might be able to meet Grant later on. Uh, it's the Kazooie team. Yeah, it's yeah. About three o'clock, I think, it finishes the, the, that one. Yeah, yeah, keep going. Anyone, anyone you can. You stop me, Will. Uh, or, uh, or I will carry on. <laughs> um, what do you think about your music being performed at games in concert? Like a few months ago, right? You had Mario Rabbits perform live. Yeah, that's ridiculous, right? I mean, that's absolutely amazing. Like, you know, I really love, you know, to, to play the Albert Hall, for God's sake. It's this little little me, Robbie Bean, like my friend, of course, for seeing these, and you know, and Eva Noon, who's a conductor, we like, I know her well. She lives in LA part of the time, so we're kind of we're friends. I mean, you know, for God's sake, you know, I, I, I mean, like, the words for that. I think that, you know, to think that something that I wrote ends up at the Albert Hall, for God's sake, that's ridiculous, right? You know, I'll be happy in the pub down the road. You know, you know, what I mean, I, you know, so I think that's pretty amazing. So, and I, I really feel like you guys, the video game music liking public. Uh, incredible, right? I feel like you're so, you're, you've got such support. You really, all the composers I know work for video games. I've got lots of fans who follow them and encourage them. But like I get on my Twitter, lots of people, you know, encourage me to go on with it and all. And I feel like it's a fantastically, a fantastic community of people that really get it. And I think that the film guys and the TV guys don't get that, right? Us video games guys are really fortunate. We get a lot of people that like the music. I think it's because you spend hours on the same level, right? With the tune just going bang, bang, bang like that. So it kind of brainwashes you. You like it because you're in it so many times, you're sick of it, right? So um, that's, that's, I don't know, that's massively humbling, right? That anybody can, it's a, it's a, I don't know the words for it, like it's amazing, right? Brilliant. Shall I go to the back? This hand is so interesting. This man, this man, look. Family, family dad to me, and uh, for years playing Banjo Kazooie in the haunted level, when you put an egg, in the green right. room, we for the longest of time thought it said fuck you, right? Uh, but I've been informed that it doesn't. What's it actually say? So, like, that genuinely says thank you. It's my voice, right? So I did that, and I just, I just, I just pitched my voice down. But Nintendo kept saying they thought it was fuck you, and I, 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 I did it like four times to say, do you really think I would put that in a kid? I mean, I've got to say, Ray, I put quite a lot of things in games that shouldn't be there, but that particular <laughs> point. That genuinely was. Uh, it was me that's going, thank you. Well, I they pitched my voice down, right? But there's plenty of other things in rare games that are a lot worse than that, believe me. Well, oh, they told me a story last night about Grandpa the Ghoulies. Yeah, so, some, yeah, so, <laughs> so in Grandpa the Ghoulies, right, there's a, there's a mummy and a cursed mummy, right? So the mummy, it's got a, like, that symbol, the ankh symbol, and it goes, ankh, when it hits you, right? And Steve Miles, I, I don't know if he's here. It's not here. He's, he's over there, right? So Steve did the, the vocal effects for the mummy, right? And so we thought it was funny to go, he'd go, Whoa! I'm good! Whoa! So it doesn't quite sound like that. It's a big gap, right? Because he goes, Whoa! When he, when he pulls it back, and it goes, Ank! Like that. Wank, ank, her, right? But when you get lots of mummies in the room, it just goes, Wank, 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 And no one spotted that, right? You know, to, the, to this day, it's, you know, it, it's fantastic that it's still there. No one got it, you know, so. Do you want one more wheel? Are you going to try? Squeeze one more in. I'm going back to the front for some reason. Hi. Um, just wanted to ask a friend of mine wanted to ask this. Um, if you were to pick one franchise to work on, like which one would you work on? You're Scottish. Yes. I'm from Edinburgh. Eh? Where, are you, where are you from, Hen? Originally from outside of Glasgow. Oh, that's that's, that's bad. <laughs> uh, Edinburgh, Glasgow, is they, they, they talk about right, eh? <laughs> so, so honestly, I'd love to work on Zelda, right? I, I, it never happened, but I mean, you know, Link to the Past, my favourite game of all time. The music in that game is so fantastic, and like, I would love to work on Zelda, but I'd, 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 I won't get the chance. I'd, 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 I know I won't. So, but um, that would, no, I'd love to do that. I'm sure you said that about Mario 15 years. True, but I kind of feel like Zelda's a bit different anyway, you know. That's all we have time for, I'm afraid. But look, Grant's going to be here at 2 o'clock on the main theatre talking about Banjo-Kazooie with the Banjo team, so please join us with that. Um, but uh, please give a warm hand for Grant Kirkland. Thank you very much.